Dear friends, this week we'll be reading the Torah portion of Vayechi. Vayechi is the final Torah portion of the book of Bereshis, Genesis. This Shabbos and Shul's Jews will be announcing loudly together when we finish the reading of the Torah. Chazak, chazak, v'nis chazek, be strong, be strong, and be strengthened. And this is something we do whenever we finish a book that we feel strong about what we had accomplished, but more importantly, we want to be strengthened to be able to continue on the study and growing in our studies. There's a fascinating thing in this week's Parsha. The beginning of the Parsha begins about the story of Jacob as he was nearing the end of his life, and he's, he's commanding to his son Yosef what he wants to happen when he passes away. And he's very clear that even though they're living in Egypt and they're under Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was the master of the Jewish people at that time, though they lived in freedom, Pharaoh was their master, and at the end of the day, he made the decisions about their movements. But Yaakov was insistent that even though Pharaoh will want me to stay in Egypt because I brought blessing to Egypt and I want to keep me uh, in Egypt for good blessings and good luck, I want to make sure and I want you to take an oath that you will bury me in Israel with my father and grandfather, my wife Leah, and uh, my mother and my grandmother. All the matriarchs and patriarchs should be buried together. And Yosef undertook the oath and that's what he did. At the end of the portion, Yosef knows he's nearing the time of his death and the Jews will be there for a while enslaved, etc. And he tells them, even though I'm in great power now, I'm not asking you to take me up and bury me in Israel, but when you leave Egypt, when the Jewish people will leave Egypt in their exodus, I want you all to remember, you'll tell your children and their children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, that you'll take up my remains to bury in Israel at that time. So why was Yaakov insistent to be buried in Israel right then and there, while Joseph had patience to wait until the Jews themselves left Egypt over a hundred years later. And here we see something very important. <clears throat> Joseph, we're told, stayed in Egypt and did not insist to go up because he wanted to let the people know that they're going into a difficult time and he's here with them. His bones are here there with them. His burial place is there with them. He's not abandoning the Jewish people. They need strength to be able to make through the most difficult period in the history of the Jewish people when they were slaves in Egypt and Yosef's being in Egypt and being close by and they're remembering that he said when you go up I will go up with you that gave them strength to be able to make it through the difficult exile difficult slavery and servitude in Egypt but Jacob had a different point of view and Jacob said if I remain in Egypt what will give us strength to be able to pull ourselves out of Egypt the culture, the strength of the superpower of the world, forcing us into their culture spiritually and physically and in all ways would be too hard to bear and we'll be crushed underneath it. Our faith will be lost. We won't even want to go to Israel. The only way is if I go to Israel now and everyone remembers that a part of us lies in Israel. Not our grandfather Abraham and Isaac who never were in Egypt, but even someone who was in Egypt, Jacob, he made it to Israel. We will also make it to Israel. And this is really what every one of us has in both of our pockets. On one hand, we live in a country, we have to become part of the country, obviously we have to follow the Jewish laws and the ways of Jewish life, but we involve ourselves like Joseph did in the country, we try to be as successful as we can, and we should all be very successful. But at the same time, we must remember that we are not the Egyptians. We are not part of, we are not really identified fully with the culture and with the place that we are in, our true home and our true identity is Israel. Just like Jacob said, I will be in Israel to remind everyone that our true identity is Israel. So when we are living here, on one hand, we know this is not our home. Our home is in Israel. Our home is in Israel, rebuilt with the temple, with all the Jews together. But while we're here, we become a part of society to influence the society around us and to be successful within society. But we never lose our true identity. It's always separate than everyone else. And that is what I want to bless you all, to remain proud people of where you are. But remember, that's not our true identity. We are Jewish first, and then we are Canadians, Americans, or whatever else. And as long as we remember that, we can always remain above the fray. But if we don't remember that, then we start getting crushed by the cultures and the ways, and we lose ourselves. And unfortunately, that's what happened to many of our brethren and sisters throughout the generations. Be strong. Remember where your real home is. Remember where your heart is. <clears throat> like it was told by a great Spanish rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, that my heart is in the East, but I live in the West. 
Our hearts are in the East, but we live in the West. Chazak, be strong, and this will give you the strength to be successful and to remain strongly Jewish and to give your children that same identity. May God bless you all. I want to wish you Shabbat Shalom. We love you all. Candlelight Time Montreal is 4.12 p.m.